Welcome to the Academy of Esports with James O'Hagan. He's on fire. Boom shakalaka. Welcome to the Academy of Esports podcast. I am your host, James O'Hagan, and I get to welcome back for this episode, Kevin Fair of I Play Games. Kevin is the founder, creator, 2009 OG. I mean, he's been doing this for a while. Kevin, thank you for being back on the Academy of Esports podcast. Hey, thanks for having me again, Jimmy. And you know, it's funny. I like to tell people I've been in business for 10 years, but when you say 2009, that blows my cup. <laughs> it shows people it's like more like a dozen at this point, a little bit more than that. Uh, but no, man, I'm I'm doing great. Uh, really enjoying the work that we've been getting into and uh, happy with it every single day, man. Well, and here's what I love is that in a couple of weeks down at Purdue University, April 8th and 9th, we have the uh, Purdue University Symposium, Games Make a Difference. I get to introduce you to my alma mater, to my campus. Uh, you know, it, it's so nice to to be able to tell people that uh, that we get to do this down on campus. So I want to thank you for being a panelist, a part of that. Uh, I think it's important to uh, have you there again because of the work that you're doing. We're going to get into that work that you are doing right now through I Play Games. For those of you who do not remember or did not check out the previous episode, first of all, go back and listen to the first episode. It'll be in the link right above, yeah, or below. (laughs) There'll be be a link in the show notes. But here's the important thing, too, is that uh, that was after a year of pandemic. We are now into the second year after the pandemic, and Kevin uh, has taken this opportunity to expand things. But like I said, before we get into that, let's get to know Kevin a little bit better. So if you listen to that first episode, you didn't get to know Kevin as deeply as we're about to get down and know <laughs> Kevin right now. So Kevin, I've got, four, I've got some questions for you. Question number one, what is a game? I'm not asking you what a game is. What is a game? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't have to be a video game. It stands out as having been important to you at some point in your life. And why was that experience meaningful? Gears of War 2, man, I got to tell people, it's really difficult for students and and kids today to understand the generational jumps that technology used to have, especially from like a functional and graphical kind of standpoint when it comes to video games. Gears of War looked amazing. It was one of those first games that really and truly took advantage of 720 and 1080p. So I was super excited about that game, but here's the reason why it's so important to me. Gears of War 2 specifically, I was just getting ready to graduate and come home from school. My brother was actually still on campus uh, down at FAMU, and that was the way that we still connected and communicated. It was one of the few games that actually worked really well online, but when I think about like the world of esports and how do you communicate with people, Gears of War 2 was something that we first had to learn the, the importance of nonverbal communication because we didn't mm-hmm. have headsets. Imagine the time with that. But then it was also really cool to start playing team games when we truly needed to like, hey, we're not in a land, we're not sitting next to each other. Gears of War 2 was a way that, you know, with my favorite gaming partner, my brother, was a way that we stayed connected. I thought that it was also a really great game that kind of ushered in a, a style of esports gameplay and uh overall man the gear series is just always really fun to me the gear series gears of war 2 was the first uh, gears of war game that i picked up and i found yeah. out really quickly um i'm terrible with the with, with a <laughs> controller i need a keyboard and mouse that was yeah. the one that that finally made me go well you're, you're getting out of your comfort zone quite a bit here with that one yeah that's a little it's definitely a, a change yep all uh, right. Uh, second question, maybe totally eccentric or it's quite traditional. What's your superpower? That thing that you do better than most people or what do you wish you could do? Um, so and my uh, another funny thing my brother pointed out one time, we uh, were going to do a Smash Brothers event that was supposed to be like this casual fun kind of thing. It was just like a fun pop up idea where only a few people were supposed to come. Well, it kept getting advertised, advertised at this convention we were at. That's got 90,000 people. That's not an exaggeration. The attendance is around 90,000 people and wow. people kept understanding it as this is going to be a tournament. There's a Smash Brothers tournament. And to bring home the point to my staff 
staff that it, this isn't a tournament. There's no sign up. But people made a sign up sheet and just kept handing each other this sign up sheet. So my superpower was I had to come up to a, uh, a basically a uh, convention panel room. It was a board, one of those humongous panel rooms, not mm. like the little hotel panel room. This is a convention size, 600 person room. And the way my superpower came into play was that I'm just always really good at smoothing over things while being completely transparent. So I just tell everybody really, you know, really clearly, hey guys, there was a total miscommunication. This is not a tournament. We're going to go one by one. It's a nice little fun event to give someone a free ticket for next year. And I think people, uh, I think people appreciated my delivery and my transparency about the situation. And guess Mm -hmm. what? I think you will find yourself in that scenario as an organizer all the time in esports and video games. Things are not going to go according to plan. Sometimes sponsors have different ideas of what they want to accomplish for an event than you do. And guess what? Someone has to be the straight guy in the room to say, hey, guys, so here's what we're not going to get. And I am extremely sorry that we will not be able to, you know, service you if this was something you were looking for. But, you know, my job is to try to, you know, uh, complete this mission the best that we possibly can. And here's the parameters for it. And like I said, man, I think people really appreciate that. I've been able to go into some really hostile scenarios and kind of, you know, find a way for us all to diplomatically walk away with what we're looking for. I I, I can attest to your thing about how things never go <laughs> how you want not, it to. Not quite. <laughs> we, we've run now uh, five Wisconsin High School Esports Association, uh, well, five years yeah. worth of championships. Right. And yeah, the schedule is what the schedule is. I don't think we get out of there until midnight. No. Uh, it, there's always something exactly There's always something so for all you little leaguers out there totally normal <laughs> don't worry about it, even for the pros all right what's that one song whenever it hits your speakers you're going to sing along to it well i think that the most recent because I, I probably have a list of a few that i can't resist but the one that i have the most recent is one of the games i thought early on did an awesome job at pulling together a great soundtrack if you were like me uh, rest in peace to my grandmother. She bought me a copy of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and there's a song on it called Superman by Goldfinger. It is one of those types of songs that I feel like the energy is upbeat, and you always kind of get into it. So no matter what happens when I hear it, you know, I feel like those are lyrics that I have to keep close to my heart, and uh, it just makes the Tony Hawk experience so much fun. So no, that's definitely one. Superman by Goldfinger is definitely a uh, a favorite. <laughs> Now, see, it's funny. You're a Tony Hawk person. I was never much of a Tony Hawk person, but the one that got me in back into uh, Run DMC was SX, SSX. Oh, tricky. tricky. Yeah, Tricky. That game was just the replay value, the snowboarding. Yeah. Uh, and the soundtrack was just solid from, especially early on. I mean, people are so used to like Grand Theft Auto now, and it's like, you know, channels. Man, we exactly. were lucky to get music. like 10 songs. Exactly. No, oh, yeah. Tr- Tricky is an amazingly good PlayStation 2 uh, uh, game. And I think what's definitely cool about you recalling that is that that was the song they went for in the uh, commercial as well. So they, they knew there was a selling point there. They they knew how to know that was going to affect gamers. Do you remember that video? Did you ever watch the video of, of Tricky by Run DMC? Oh, so I am familiar. So I'm familiar with the with the tricky with the whole nine yards, and I knew who's, you who's, know who's the two guys, who's the two white guys playing cards. Come on now. Oh, I have I have no idea. <laughs> it was Penn and it was Penn and Teller. That was that was the big crossover back. Back is like 87, 86, 87 when that song well, came out. It was well, Penn here's what's funny about Penn and Teller. I couldn't recognize Penn and Teller a couple weeks ago because I said they looked different. When I was a kid, they had that show on HBO. Well, guess yeah. what? Now I didn't recognize them when I was too young for that. <laughs> no, uh, Penn Gillette has lost a bunch of weight. Oh, so, weight, yeah, yes. You, yeah, you can't, it's, you can't even tell who he is. All right. <laughs> Enough for the people going, what are they talking about? Don't worry about it. It's all good. All right. Here's the, uh, this question now leads us into the content, because again, you've been doing some phenomenal work with the Chicago park district, which I think is, it, we'll, we'll talk about what it was a year ago and boy, what a difference a year makes. What's one thing right now in your field that surprises people when they first hear about it? I mean, even what you were telling me today, before we started recording, 
uh, was a bit surprising to me just on how much things have changed in just a year. So, but what's, what's the thing that surprises people when they first hear about it? People are still incredibly surprised that there's so much organization involved in it. I think there are still a lot of people, especially a lot of parents who think that this is like a basement kind of habit. And for me, it is a way to try to get everybody involved, right? You know, I was literally watching some Little League Pop Warner football uh, just earlier, and I said, this is only possible because every parent makes the commitment to get the kids to practice. Every coach makes the commitment to come on time to be the best best leader they can be to be the best self that they are. And I think when people who are not familiar see people wearing uh, matching jerseys or coaches with shirts and ties on and commentators and these really large events, they're still really surprised that, that there's that much organization that even translates down to the uh, grassroots level. Even on a grassroots level, I think there's always someone who's really surprised to see like, hey, so you guys have an effective set of rules that governs all of this, even amongst you groups that don't have corporate sponsorship. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the one that still kind of surprises me because guess what? Here's the thing. It doesn't cost you one red cent for, to search on YouTube esports event. And you'll see all of those characteristics, right? You know, so if you're a parent and your your son, daughter is into gaming or competitive gaming, it, it really, once again, doesn't cost you too much time and really not much money to just have the, the slightest bit of insight. And then you'll see, here's all of this engagement. Here's how these bodies organize, you know, amongst one another to make these large events happen or to build these communities, quite frankly. Well, and, and I think this goes into some of the work again that you've done with the park district. Cause when I met you, there was, it was at fall X in Milwaukee Yep. that we, that we met up again at Malcolm X college. I want to say it was like January, 2020. So right before the, so pandemic. we were, it was right before pandemic. Yep. Right. And then when we talked last year, you had just been featured, I think it was in the Chicago tribune for the yep. work that you were doing in the park district, Chicago park district. And now it's a year later after starting work with the park district, and it's not just doing something small. I, has the park district started to open their eyes as to just how much there is involvement with this? Because you've expanded, right? Yep. So last year or last year, now what we would consider a year and some change back in December of 2020, we put on a virtual NBA 2K event, which was which was a really nice event, uh, something that I thought was cool for kids to be able to do over holiday. That mm -hmm. is now expanded. The park has built in um, in 10 different sites, something that they call teen centers that all include these double these dual esports setups and stations that I am the most happy about that they have given full internet connectivity through uh, land or ethernet cable rather, and they've given them really robust speeds and of course ping. So I feel like part of my input on that for the longest was just like, hey, you guys are gonna wanna try to do stuff between different parks and I said, I know it's going to help, you know, if you could say, hey, this park can virtually play this other park. So I say one of the things you definitely want to invest in is, is Internet. You're going to have to have that. And even mm -hmm. if you want to do things here locally at this particular space, you're going to need some robust Internet. So uh, we've had a number of different events. We actually had uh, I want to say it was Daniel Smith from the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars as one of our guests for a med tournament we actually did. I want to say that was in the middle of this previous December as well. And mm -hmm. it was a really cool way to kind of connect the sports and the esports and all of those different things at the 10 different sites at the uh, Chicago Park Districts, uh, what they call teen centers. And so, no, man, I think it's a really great idea that gets – you know, uh, gives they, it really does give students an opportunity to come up. They got PlayStations, they've got Xboxes, they've got uh, Nintendo Switches up there. They've got a lot of different stuff for students to be able to try. And guess what? In my line of work, you keep finding out more and more kids are into certain games, but also don't mm -hmm. own games. And so, having daily access to that, I uh, I have definitely. Uh, applauded the park district for really taking some of our input and then of course making our events bigger it's made us uh it's made us uh uh take the opportunity to get more kids to go to different parks playing against one another it's been a lot of fun i i'm always impressed when i drive around chicago which i mean 
it's hard to drive around Chicago. Right. Depending on what street you're on. Yeah, so you, you just have to, to drive around. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes you're sitting there and you're, you know, you've got a couple of minutes as you're waiting for traffic to loosen up. But I'm always amazed when I go by some of the buildings that the park district has. These aren't just like little, you know, shacks or sheds where, you know, to store balls and stuff. I mean, these are full blown. They almost look like schools yep. in some parts of the town. Um, and I think, what they have done especially is that they have always kept their park district offerings moderate to some extent yes. and, and diverse. And the last time we spoke, one of the things that you spoke to that I think is really resonating with a lot of people, especially in some parts of our country where not just in urban areas, but in rural areas is access. And as yeah. you just alluded to the park district is saying, Hey, here's 10 sites. We're going to start in these areas right now to make sure that, as you said, it isn't just putting the, the the PlayStation or the Xbox in the building. It's making sure that it is properly connected, that it's yep. got a quality connection, that it's got the games that they want to play. And as you're saying, too, even finding some of the old school games are the ones that people are still connecting back with. Yeah. And kudos to them. I also want to make sure that I make the very real point and, and, and mentioning that they have fairly placed these 10 different sites across the city of Chicago. So you've got a few, a handful that are on the south side. You've got a handful that are right in the middle, reaching out towards the west side of Chicago. And then they also have sites on the north side as well. So it's not a scenario where you would look and say, oh, there's a difference between the haves and the have nots. They've mm -hmm. equally spread out that opportunity to to pretty much any, uh, any community in Chicago. And I think that's really important to highlight, too, because even in the recent history of uh, the city of Chicago, there is definite inequities. Um, yeah. Even uh, when Rahm Emanuel was mayor, it was noted just from an educational standpoint that a lot of the schools on the north side of the city were, were getting additional funding and additional structures and support. Yeah. And even when uh, down in Inglewood and they built the STEM high school, um, there was a complaint that that people would say, well, this isn't for our kids. So it's it, like I said, it's it. There's still this um, uh, there's still very much a a, you know, a disparity about, there's definitely a difference all of that you you know and i think part of what is uh important is is for us to have fair and open conversation about that right then i think what's mm -hmm. also important is to have extended conversation on how that affects you know the children as they currently are in those spaces because here's the thing that i think all of us can connect on white black other uh, man, woman, child, is that none of us want our kids to not have the right opportunity, right? I think if you mm -hmm. give any parent, any fair or reasonable parent, the opportunity to hear how one school is different from another, and then, like I said, have the extended conversation on it, you know, hey, so this is how this is affecting our kids long term. I think any parent would want to fairly have every student have the right opportunity, right? And I think that's really what most of this kind of comes down to. And you have these things in more of a micro conversation than you do in a macro, right? Big picture, mm -hmm. we're going to look at, hey, did everybody pass the standardized test this year? What percentage of students are doing well on standardized tests? But mm -hmm. when you bring it down to the micro level instead of macro, you start looking at these things as like, hey, man, so you telling me a whole great uh, class of third graders did poorly this year? Like we should, mm -hmm. we should want to change that. And I think... Like I said, if you give most any reasonable parent, you know, uh, a story about something like that, they would want to have something that changes or helps that scenario, too. Well, and I think it helps too, uh, Lori Lightfoot. People can say what they will about uh, Ms. Light, uh, Mayor Lightfoot. Sorry. Um, but what she has done, which I think is also important in this messaging about, you know, as you said, 10, 10 centers having games. She's she's designated Chicago as a trauma informed city, meaning we're going to look at things from the real, very real uh, uh, aspect that Chicago is a city that is has a gun violence problem, a gang yeah. problem in a lot of neighborhoods. And she's saying rather than just trying to fix all the different things, we have to look at things from a totally different lens of the trauma that goes on, not just in the violence, but in some of the broken homes in in the uh housing inequities yeah. and the homelessness yep she's really i think tapped into something where as a city 
you know, if it was just a gaming thing, it wouldn't necessarily, I think, be as impactful, not just because you're doing it. I mean, it's going to be impactful because you're doing it. But I think having a mayor's office that recognizes, hey, yeah. we have to find different ways to push against the mental health trauma that our children are facing every day. And if this is a space where they're choosing to play in video games, then let's start putting it in. And and I'm, I'm glad she's taking, you know, as you said, it started with your one program is now expanded into yep. 10 different uh, groups. It's and, and as you were, as we were talking about at the pre uh, pre talk, um, this is now you're, you're connecting this into some of the, the colleges in the city. Is that correct? No. Yeah. So, I mean, like our extensive work with the park district has allowed us to work in a few different spaces, really in the same capacity of like, hey, here's how, you know, we'll bring you the nuts and bolts, but we'll also be the facilitators of this process as well. And guess what? I tell people all the time, man, we really had a uh, or a lot of organizations had an awakening about how impactful gaming can be. And so at this point, we are currently working at close to about a dozen different schools where we are providing after school esports where we were for uh for a moment we were doing those things virtually now we've been able to move back into the schools doing them and guess what i am a huge fan of trying to uh show how the career and the collegiate pathway can be a part of your experience as a high school or as a middle school student um mm. by by saying hey we're going to take trips so that you can get a true example of like here's where you could go with your experience in esports right here right now we did a uh, event with the windy city bulls last month in hoffman estates which was a lot of fun we brought students from five different schools to the uh, stadium they got to be three industry experts, uh, a professional streamer, a arcade builder, and a pro gamer that they all got to ask questions from. We had a panel for that. They also got to put their skills to the test. We were practicing Mortal Kombat for about six weeks. So they had a uh, inter-school Mortal Kombat tournament. That was a lot of fun. And then the Windy City Bulls really did a cool thing by putting up our Street Fighter V exhibition on the big screen. So they got nice. a chance to, to really kind of figure out like, hey, so this is where I could end up landing and then get FaceTime with someone that can say, hey, I, I went from having streaming on my laptop to having 125 subscribers, right? They got to meet someone who says, hey, I just won $10,000 in the last Mortal Kombat tournament that I played. And uh, we're trying to continue that experience. For me, I want to definitely get mom and dad involved i want to get the students to learn more about the collegiate esport experience so our next trip is going to be depaul university we're going to go to their uh, esports land center they're going to get a chance to be a uh, head coach a recruiter and probably some of their esports athletes as well we've been practicing super smash brothers so they're going to have an inner school smash brothers tournament as well and so yeah I, I just love being able to take these things that i'm able to uh show them in the after school program and then say, hey, guess what? Get this permission slip signed so that mom and dad know very specifically you're going on to a college campus. You're being true uh, uh, authority figures, people who can, you know, make decisions or, hey, this is how we decide to choose what a esports scholarship student is going to look like. When they get to decide, hey, here's how much we're going to put into scholarships. And you get to have FaceTime with those people. You get to meet them, ask the questions. And if you do get good on the tournament, then you also get to impress them at the same time so to me it's the experience is to is to show and kind of broaden their view on collegiate esports and you know beyond that as well in the uh your career pathway well and i know too after roosevelt and uh robert morris uh aligned themselves Line, I know that yep. there's there, the, the program has kind of gone a little bit but courtney uh james at depaul she's still you know does an amazing an, job yeah an amazing torch and, and my friend april welch at iit on the yep. south side over by over by comiskey uh also just a ball of energy who is infectious and and excited to help get kids she is. Yeah. <laughs> involved in these things um well well uh kevin it has been like i said it sounds like it's been an amazing uh, just another year, and I don't know, not just another year, I mean, just a, an amazing year. Amazing year, growth. yeah. Uh, this is something you, again, 2009, did you think you'd be having this conversation 13 years later, talking about things in the ways that you're talking about them now? 
Yes. No, I, I 100% okay. totally. I, no, I to, it's no, no, I mean, and it's so funny because I, I tell people all the time, it was no surprise to me. I, uh, <clears throat> I originally very much wanted to move into this with the idea of having, you know, um, different venues that would kind of help kids kind of get into that space. I know it's hard for people to imagine now Chicago without any arcade bars. We've got like 14 of them. And mm -hmm. I specifically said, I said, hey, guys, man, millennials are coming into their own at this point. And at this age, they're going to want these places that facilitate both a virtual live video game type experience. At the same time, they're going to want to grab, grab a beer. And I said, here's the other thing. I play games with my younger cousin and this is not going anywhere. I said the, the space for competition is going to grow. I said the age to get started is going to be earlier and earlier and earlier. And I think that if you look back at the previous episode to remind all of viewers, please look back at the previous episode. You will remember that I have said I had my finger on the pulse as a 22 year old or where this was going to move and go. And I am, I am happy that things are continuing on an upward trend, but I'm not surprised. No, man, I'm, nobody is happier than me, but no one is as, uh, at, at least as surprised as me. I, I am incredibly happy at where we're at and uh, totally, totally had good expectations for it. Well, Kevin Fair of I Play Games, it's been a pleasure to sit down with you again. I can't wait for us to uh, to be together again in a couple Next of weeks. Next week, down. right? Yeah, a couple of weeks, yeah. Yeah, Purdue University, April 8th and 9th. The panels and uh, discussions go off April 8th. They will be streamed online free for anybody to grab. If you want to come, come down to campus, I believe there's a small fee for non-students. Students yeah. are free of charge on Purdue University campus. Uh, Kevin Fair of I Play Games, thank you for once again being a guest on the Academy of Esports podcast. Always. That will do it for this week on the Academy of Esports. I've been your host, James O'Hagan. Esports are organized competitive video games allowing schools to redefine their athletic culture, diversify opportunities for student participation, promote good physical and mental health, increase collegiate scholarship pathways, and play games. We can never forget the importance of play. The mission of the Academy of Esports is to support these ideals. The vision of the Academy of Esports is for all students to experience the fun and joy of playing competitive video games. You may follow me on Twitter at Jim O'Hagan. That's at J-I-M-O-H-A-G-A-N and through the Academy of Esports account at T-A-O Esports it's a great way to get the latest blog posts, podcast episodes, and news coming out of esports and education. And remember, you can continue your engagement by going to www.taoesports.com. You can also connect through Facebook at www.facebook.com slash taoesports. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to our time again next week.